Hey everyone, thanks for joining me for this video. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about three of the top royalty companies that you can buy in Canada. There's a lot of benefits of owning royalty companies. And before we jump in, I'm just going to get into what some of those benefits are and why I personally love investing in royalty corporations. So number one, royalty corps tend to provide very high dividend yields because they're just flowing through all of the value and all of the free cash flow that they derive from their top line royalties and pass it right on to shareholders. The other thing about royalty corps is they don't really have a lot of expenses. You usually don't have periods of high capex, wage inflation, rent inflation, things like that because they're just getting a percentage of top line revenue. They're really not managing the rest of the business. They just own the trademark. So that really provides a lot of security around rising costs in the short term, hampering profitability. And if anything, they're recession or inflation proof in the sense that as businesses and operators have to increase prices to pay for those things that are going up like rent, like labor, like cost of goods, you're still getting a percentage of the total revenue. So if anything, as inflation goes up, your dividends will go up as well with it, assuming volumes remain somewhat flat. So that's the other thing. Lastly, lots of these royalty corps, especially the food royalty corps, are in sectors and industries that are really reliable income streams. In addition to that, lots of them have really strong standings in recessions and lots of history of outperforming the market over those time periods. So that's just a handful of reasons why I'm invested in this space. I wanted to th share three different royalty corps across three different sectors of the economy with you guys today. First one you can see on the screen is Diversified Royalty Corp. This company here has an 8.5% dividend yield that you can see. So a really nice starting yield. Over the last five years, stock price is down about 10%. So it's been some dilution um, or some loss of shareholder value from the stock price. But overall, the dividend yield's been pretty high consistently. So your overall return still hasn't been too bad over the last five years. They've actually raised the dividend slightly a couple times recently. So this isn't necessarily a company that um, is going to have stagnating or, or declining uh, dividend payments over time. Just wanted to share a bit about their business here. You can see in this chart, uh, above it, you can see some more details of their of their Q2 results, but just wanted to share the revenue breakdown so you can get a sense of what you're really investing in here. Their biggest position and their biggest brand that they own the trademark for is Mr. Lube, which brings in about $7.5 million a year. That grew about 20% over last year. The next one is Stratus. This is a commercial cleaning company they just acquired in the U.S., did about $2 million last quarter, nothing in the base since it was a new acquisition. Nurse Next Door is essentially like an, an old age um, support business where uh, people, nurses go into people's houses, help them out. I believe they get about a 2% increase every year in royalties from that corporation. So that's pretty stagnant uh, in terms of the growth. Oxford Learning Centers up about 9% about $1.2 million a quarter. Mr. Mike's, I believe this is a chain of steakhouses, up nicely, rebounding uh, from the pandemic, probably up to $1.1 million for the quarter. One of the areas they've had a lot of weakness is air miles, lots of transition and issues um, going on there. So you can see a pretty big hit there, unfortunately. But lastly, another income stream that I like is Sudden Realty Group. This company owns um, the Sudden Realty Group uh, brand, and every real estate agent that works for Sudden pays about a monthly uh, charge of about $70 to uh, the Sudden Realty Group, which just flows out to you through dividends on, an, on a monthly basis. So that's a really nice stream of income from the real estate sector as well. Obviously, their biggest business, about 50% of their um, revenues are coming from, oh, coming from Mr. Lube, I meant to click. So Mr. Lube here, um, obviously is uh, a quick lube provider in the routine automotive maintenance sector. So in addition to oil change services, Mr. Lube also provides a variety of automotive maintenance services that include fluid changes, filter replacements, windshield trip repair, and tire services. So this is um, just essentially an automotive repair company. And one of my beliefs is that as cars get more expensive, get harder to get, 
more people are going to be holding on to older cars for longer, which benefits companies like Mr. Lube who service these older cars, who have to repair them and whatnot. So I think Mr. Lube's really well positioned overall as a, as a brand. Once again, you can kind of see some pictures and summaries of some of their other holdings here if you want to pause and take a look. But generally, um, a pretty wide array of businesses across um, old age care, uh, automotive, learning, restaurants, real estate, commercial cleaning. So they're all over the place, well di di diversified, really earned their name of diversified royalty corporation on this one. Market cap of about $400 million, trading at the lower end of their trading range here. I think some earnings from some US automotive companies came out that were a bit lackluster and they feared that some of those results may um, come over the border. The Mr. Lube uh, was the reason that the stocks dropped a bit here over the last six months or so. But overall, have seen nothing but healthy business in their returns and I've really in their reports, and I've really liked getting that 8.5% dividend yield paid out on a monthly basis. The second royalty corp that I wanted to share today was Pizza Pizza Royalty Corp. This one's been doing phenomenal, as you can see by the five-year chart, up about 50% in five years. And that is before they do their uh, dividend payouts, obviously. So about 10% a year just on capital appreciation. And then they've actually paid out around a 6% dividend a year. So if you add it all together, their total shareholder return has been in the mid-teens, Pizza Pizza has been a really phenomenal brand. You can kind of see here where their presence lies across Canada. Very heavily situated in Ontario, over 500 locations. You can see here their total locations are about 750. So about two thirds of their business in Ontario. They also own the Pizza 73 brand that operates out west, most notably in Alberta there with 94 locations. So that's a nice build as well. And then very recently they are planning on opening up a handful of new pizzerias in Mexico that they've branded PZA. So that'll be really interested to see how those pan out. They have a plan to get to 10 restaurants there, which could be additional profit centers for uh, the royalty fund. Looking at their earnings here, you can see a lot of strength on the pizza pizza side up 10% last quarter, 12% year to date. And that's on huge increases last year of 20 and 25%. Pizza 73 had a bit of a weaker uh, 2022, see them down a percent, up about 0.6% on the year, but that's really rebounded and accelerated here. 5% year-to-date growth, 7% second quarter growth. So great to see that acceleration on the Pizza 73 brand. And then when looking at the stock price here, it's about 14 bucks. They're going to do about an, a dollar of earnings per share, both this year and next year, almost all of which, which they pay out to shareholders via that, that, that monthly dividend. So really like um, th this company. If we look at uh, some more attributes of the company here, you can see just how often they increase or adjust their dividend. And this is the pros and the cons of royalty corps, right? As they increase their revenues and increase the royalties that they're deriving from those revenues of the underlying businesses, they usually give you really steady increases here, year over year over year, a tiny bit. But then when stuff hits the fan, you can see obviously the pandemic went down pretty greatly um, from seven cents to five cents. They've slowly been building back up and now we're back to seven and a half cents, which is slightly higher than we were before the pandemic as well. So really interesting to just see the flow that comes with obviously pros in terms of getting dividend increases every time same store sales growth is going up on an annualized basis. But also you see the, the ugly part of that in terms of when things go the other way. That's just the con of, of owning a business that pays out all of their earnings to shareholders. Overall, I think Pizza Pizza is a really defensive stock to own during a time of recession. Lots of people may be trading down into Pizza Pizza from sit down options or more expensive options. Pizza Pizza is still pretty um, good value in the grand scheme of things. So like that aspect of the business, like the six and a half percent yield, like their ability to grow restaurant count and shareholder value over time. So I think Pizza Pizza is a great royalty company. I own it in my dividend portfolio as well. And it's one that I will continue to own into the future. The third royalty stock that I am talking about today is a completely different sector. It's Labrador Iron Ore Royalty Corp. So this company owns um, 
a percentage of a iron ore mine, I believe that operates out east. They've done really well over the last five years. You can see their share price is up almost 25%. And that is not including obviously the dividends they've paid out, which have varied between like five and 15% depending on the year. So really great to see they've been able to increase their capital or their price of equity at the same time of paying out monster dividends over a long period of time. So shareholders in Labrador Iron Ore over the last five years probably come close to doubling their money. Some really, really good returns that, that we've seen here. A bit more about Labrador Iron Ore Royalty Corp. So they actually own 15% of the underlying Iron Ore Corporation, which owns the mine and, and the business. So they have an equity stake in the company. On top of that, they're getting a 7% royalty of all dollar sales. And then they're also getting a 10 cents per ton that is sold outside of the company. So they have equity, they have a percent royalty on top line sales, and then they have a fixed 10 cent royalty per ton of iron ore. So lots of different revenue streams they're, they're adding together here um, in order to pay out that really nice dividend yield that they have been supporting for, for quite a while. Looking at their business a bit more, they produce anywhere between 15 and 19 million tons of iron ore on an annualized basis. You can see in the last year they did 17.6 million tons, um, which was slightly up from 2021. So some slight growth there. And then just the sales of iron ore pretty much in line with production. So it's not like there's a lot of pressure. It doesn't appear, appear like there's a lot of pressure um, in terms of where the demand is or them finding demand for iron ore as people in China and the U.S. are building all over the place. Iron ore is really an essential product uh, to support infrastructure builds and things like that. Um, but with that being said, this company, since it is an underlying commodity, what they're producing, you can see a lot of volatility from $30 a share all the way down to $8 a share. Then it went all the way up 300% to $35, hit $50 in the last year, and now back down to 30 So it is all over the place with the global um, iron ore market. So this isn't for um, an unrisky investor, let's put it. Uh, lots of these other ones like Pizza Pizza is a much more stable company if we look at it um, long term. It did have actually a pretty recent up and down, but for the most part, the state of their business um, may not be as volatile as a, as a commodity company. Looking at their earnings here, you're going to do about $3, just under $3 of EPS. So trading at about 11 times earnings on this company. This is not one that I own, but it's one I've had on my watch list before. Um, I find it interesting. I think they're really good at delivering income to shareholders. Uh, so maybe one day I may add it to the portfolio, but I just don't like the element of uh, being at the mercy of a commodity price to decide how much uh, dividends you'll be getting on a quarterly basis on this one. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video going through three different types of royalty companies that are available to purchase and invest in in the Canadian markets. There are tons of different pizza, uh, pizza, pizza. There are tons of different food royalty stocks out there. To name a few of them, it's Boston Pizza Foods Royalty Corporation. You got A and W Royalty Corp. You got the Keg Royalty Corp. You got Sir Royalty, which owns brands like Jack Astor's and and uh, Scadabush and whatnot. So these are gr all great options for dividend income and enhanced dividend income. Um, so would recommend. If you're looking for that to consider evaluating or looking into some of these styles of companies and see what fits your need and, and what you uh, are interested in, in watching for more. Thanks for watching this one. And if you like this kind of content, be sure to subscribe to the channel. And if you've watched all the way to the end, be sure to give this video a big thumbs up. It really does help with the YouTube algorithm. Appreciate it a lot. And I'll see you guys in the next one.